It's time now for Countywide, a special presentation of Yavapai Broadcasting News. Join Paul David and Brad Miller as they talk with our community's leaders, newsmakers, and people in the know. You'll hear about the hot topics that affect all our lives here in Yavapai County. And now, here's today's Countywide. Uh, I'm Brad Miller, and welcome to the program. It is countywide, and we're happy to welcome into studio today a uh, uh, first time guest. Carolyn Stillman uh, is the conference director for the Southwest Dowsing Conference, the American Society of Dowsers. That's coming to Flagstaff uh, this weekend, I think, mm -hmm. the 7th. It is. Uh, 7th through the 12th of October, and we're going to talk a little bit about that today. And I'm going to uh, tell you, we just, uh, somebody sent us a press release, and I said, Dowsing. Dowsing. Now, isn't that where people look for water? And exactly. I started to kind of read the information that they sent. I said, we got to have Carolyn come on. Uh, there's a little mm -hmm. video on the information that they sent us and that uh, is on your website at ArizonaDowsers.com. And mm -hmm. I became fascinated. Good. And so uh, here, here you are, and we're, 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 we're glad that you came in. Um, I want to just kind of start with what is dowsing. And I'm going to uh, tell you and our, our audience, I'm the skeptic here in the office. I don't go for these kinds of things. So I'm going to be looking at you that way today. Okay. Um, but it, it, when we say, uh, I think most people, when you say dowsing, think the stick and exactly. look for, looking for water outside, mm -hmm. I, I, is that a good place to exactly. start? Exactly. Most people think of the Y rod, a willow branch, and looking for water. That Some people call it water witching. Okay. Um, and that's what's known as dowsing. But dowsing can be used for most anything. It's a way of getting in touch with your intuition which we all have, uh -huh. and it's just a matter of learning how to access that. The tools that we use are just readout devices, if you will. They just amplify what's going on in our body. Okay. And so, but we, we can train almost anyone to douse. It's like learning to ride a bike. It, you just have to get some classes or a class and, and practice. It's there. It's there. It's just... We just don't learn how to use it very much in our modern society. No. In Go ahead. old societies, I mean, they use dowsing all the time. They had to to find the water. Right. I did a little research after we chatted and, and looked online, and there's a lot of information mm -hmm. uh, there. Uh, and that was exactly what I found that interested me, and I, I hadn't thought of it that way. Sometimes we don't think uh, maybe enough about uh, who came before us and what they did, but the folks in the Old West that settled where we, even where we are now, um, without water, you're done. Exactly. Uh, out there on your lonesome. And mm -hmm. uh, so if this was a way to do it, I mean, rivers and streams, but out in the middle of nothing, when you've got to dig for a well, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's a whole different kind of thing. Um, now, it was interesting because when we chatted, uh, you were a really good sport about it because I told you, I said, I'm going to be kind of skeptical, but I, it was interesting to learn you were pretty skeptical about this. I Is this was. an art, a science? What do we even <laughs> call dowsing? I'm not sure. Well, um, we had some land in Flagstaff that we needed to find water in order to develop it. And so my husband um, went to the University of uh, Northern Arizona, asked the hydrologist what to do, and he said, well, you might try dowsing. It often works. And so we went out and cut a willow branch, and my husband wa started walking up to a known well, uh -huh. and all of a sudden the sticks went down. He said, oh, I think I understand this. So we started dowsing. We drilled where he said and hit good water, and <laughs> the rest is history. And uh -huh. then we found the American Society of Dowsers, which is a national organization. We have about 4,000 members worldwide, really. Yeah. Is, did you become a believer at that moment then? No, I okay. did not. I did not want to be involved with these kooks at all. <laughs> <laughs> My husband said, well, I'm going to this dowsing conference in California. If you want a vacation, you can come with me. <laughs> and I went and went to one class and thought, oh, this is really interesting. And I went to a second class and thought, wow, this has really got something that I can use in my everyday life. I didn't care about finding water, sure. but I wanted to know how to douse for vitamins. Um, we douse for our professional people, our doctors, our lawyers, our plumbers. We will go down through the phone book and douse. Is this person going to give us the service that we want at a price we want to pay that we can communicate with? And so we will get yes, no answers to that. 
So it's tapping into a different... You mentioned we can go through the phone book and try to find mm-hmm. a plumber. Instead of getting the guy with the biggest ad... Exactly. Or, or the guy that lives closest or, or whatever, <clears throat> you can factor those in. Right. But this... And again, art, it's science, an intuitive skill. skill. A skill. It's it's built into our intuition, <laughs> and uh, we just don't use it very much uh-huh. in today's modern society. But it's there. It can be used. It can be accessed, and it's a whole different realm of knowledge that we work with. On the website, it said you can apply this, as you've indicated, uh, just in that and finding you know service people and different kinds of things. Um, How to find ripe melons in the store. Exactly. (laughs) I thought that was kind of funny. Exactly. I can go into a store and I do a a yes, my my finger will slide, a no, my finger will stop, and I can point to a melon and say, is that the ripest one? And if I get a yes, I'll pick it up and buy it. If I get a no, I leave it alone. How often are you wrong? You get home and the melon's no good. Not too often. Uh Uh-huh. Occasionally, yes. It's sure. not a hundred percent perfect, sure. Sure. but okay, pretty often. It'd be right. Um, you, you mentioned a couple times um, the word intuition, and mm-hmm. there's kind of the cliches: a woman's intuition, mother's intuition, and and different things. And there's a, a lot of people who will believe in those kinds of things. Oh, I knew the phone was going to ring. Oh, mm-hmm. you know, just different little kinds of things. And again, the skeptic like myself is going to say, oh you know, whatever, it seems like you have to kind of accept that that is a realm of either belief or or what have you right. to be able, it would seem to me you have to kind of step over whatever skepticism you, you might have mm-hmm. to be able to do this. Is that right? Right. Well, if you meet someone new and you just are instantly attracted to them, that's an intuitive level. Okay. If you meet someone new and you feel very guarded and you think, oh, I'm not sure about this person, which happens to all of us. That's that intuitive level at work. And so if you just know that that's there, it's just like having another set of encyclopedias, if you will. Okay. You can tap into it and say, would you give me the information that I need about this particular subject? Just one other reference, one other resource. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To kind of understand. And once going. you learn to douse, you don't ever want to be without it. Well, and that here again, that was something uh, that uh, that kind of attracted us to having you come on the program. Um, and you've said even in the show so far that it just is really it goes from being kind of it sounds like it started out as a hobby to being just everyday life. How many times have you maybe even subconsciously doused something even today since you woke up this morning? Oh, um Quite frequently. Uh Um, And often I will douse. I don't have to go through the the can I, may I, should I, which we do as asking permission to douse for things. Gotcha. Can I? Am I physically able? Do I have the skill to do it? Right. May I? Do I have the permission? Like if you're dousing for water and you want to know if that piece of land is that person's property or if it's a neighbor's property. And you may not have the neighbor's permission to mm-hmm. douse. So, and should I douse? Is it appropriate to douse? So we ask those questions. Most of the time, I don't do that, especially for myself. Right, right, right. It's okay. Did I get doused when you and I met this morning? Uh, no. Good. Okay. All right. Good. That's why <laughs> again, you're here. Again, it's just this intuitive <laughs> thing. I mean, your voice on the phone uh-huh. was enough to make me feel very comfortable about doing this. Okay. And that makes sense to me. That mm-hmm. it just it, It's just one more kind of thing to look mm-hmm. at when you're assessing whatever it may be. Right. All exactly. Right. Interesting. Right. We'll have more. Uh, and Carolyn uh, Stillman uh, is here from the uh, um, the American Society of Dowsers Southwest Dowsing Conference, having their conference this weekend in Flagstaff, Arizona Dowsers.com. She's brought some uh, props, tools of the trade. What do we call these? We call them dowsing tools. Dowsing tools. They're just an amplification of what goes on uh, in your body. Okay. Uh, I, I'm sorry. Let me interrupt. Let me hold you there. Mm-hmm. When we come back, we'll talk about those, right. and Carolyn will even give us a bit of a demonstration. Dowsing, our subject today on Countywide. We'll be back right after this. If you're looking for a new pet that your family will cherish every day, consider adopting from a shelter. Shelters are the best places to find a new pet. That's where you'll discover healthy, loyal, 
and loving animals, eager to become a part of your family. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet, so bring home your new buddy today. To find out more, visit the shelterpetproject.org. Hey, honey. What's up, buddy? Honey? I think he's been smoking pot. Call 911. It's okay, Joey. I'm here. Can you hear me, son? I'm right here. Are you with Is he me? breathing? He's not you. responsive. Hello? <sighs> Honey, give me steak knife and a ballpoint pen. What are you now, doing? step. I'm gonna do mouth to mouth. No. You know lots of ways to help your child, but do you know what to do if they're using drugs? The partnership at drugfree.org can help. Cook foods to the right temperature using a food thermometer. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Hi, I'm Captain Larry Dawson with the Cottonwood Fire Department, here to talk to you about cooking safety in your home. When cooking with oil, make sure you have the proper size lid and an oven mitt nearby. If the oil does catch fire, cover the pan with the lid while wearing an oven mitt. Turn off the burner. Never throw water or baking soda on a grease fire. Never leave an open flame unattended and always have a working fire extinguisher nearby. Welcome back to the program. Our guest today is Carolyn Stillman. Uh, the American Society of Dowsers, the Southwest Dowsing Conference is this weekend at uh, Little America in Flagstaff, October 7th through the 12th. And uh, Carolyn, there will be uh, an awful lot of people there. You said you've had as many as about 430 some guests right. uh, in, in conferences past. Every other uh, year you do this and you've been involved personally for quite some time now. Right. And uh, it sure sounds like a lot of, you know, uh, this here again, as we talked during the break, this is one of those things that's a little different for some folks. But but obviously, a lot of people uh, have uh, a, a deep interest uh, mm -hmm. uh, that they that they attend and and kind of follow this. Now, you brought some some tools of the trade. We call them, and I'll mm -hmm. let you start wherever you want. The you mentioned earlier on, and I think that's what a lot of us kind of picture with when we're dowsing for water: the willow stick with the the kind of fork and the right. Well, now we use a, a modern plastic sort of thing. Okay. This is what my husband uses. It's a Y rod. We call it. And what we do is say, please show me a no, and I'm not moving my hands, but it will go down. Now, this is not my best tool of choice. Okay. I tend not to use this very often. Please show me a no, and it's gonna go up. Okay. And I, with the beads on here, I can't make this move. It will move on its own. You can do this to show, please show me the direction to water or to something, and it will go down when it uh -huh. It finds that spot. So, okay, I was going to say, so the different tools aren't necessarily for to do different... They uh, sort of are, yes. Okay, um, they are, for um, different I things. I find um, the pendulum works much more quickly than some of these other things. If you're out in the field trying to look for water or noxious zones, which will go under a house, for instance, okay. you might want to use one of these others. Okay, hold, hold up the pendulum, if you would. Okay. For our, our radio listeners, is, uh, uh, of course, Cable One Channel 2 in the Verde Valley, VerdeValleyTV.com for the visual. Um, the first uh, tool that Carolyn held up uh, would be kind of like the two sticks, kind right. of a modern man-made version of that. It's a yeah. Now you've got just a simple on, it looks like a gold chain, just kind of a heavy right. weighted pendulum. Yes, okay. you can use a nut on a string if you want, a piece of jewelry anything that you want and you just it will say please show me a yes and it will okay. go back and forth like this please show me a no it will go this way okay i can ask for directions it will follow please show me the direction to the front door and it will start going that way if i follow it when i get to the front door it'll go back it'll go sideways so to it's you, a way here. of using directions okay yeah Okay. So, how did you say it at the beginning of the program or toward the beginning? And as you use these tools, it, it seems to me that 
uh, the dowser. Is that the right word? Mm -hmm. You're the dowser. I'm a dowser. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's the car. These tools are the, just the steering wheel. Exactly. Is that exactly? A, oh, that's a, a great way of putting analogy? it. Yeah. That they help uh -huh. you kind of steer what you've got. Right. Innately. I mean, innately you know what it is, but this just amplifies what's going on internally. Okay. And there's a big complicated thing with your adrenal glands and your pituitary makes a something or other. And I've never understood that, but I understand that this works. Have you ever talked to anybody who wanted to try this and just didn't get it? it just, I, I'm interested, I want to learn, and I, but they never, for whatever reason, make the connection. My husband's been teaching basic dowsing for 20 years okay. at these conferences. He has had one person in 20 years not be able to learn to douse and that person had such a tremor in his hands okay. from a physical problem okay. that it was difficult for him to work but he could intuit and he said oh I think I know the answer without using a tool Okay. and it gets to that point. Well I was going to say if I'm following the theory correctly, the way the way you've kind of talked about it, these tools maybe at some point, either based on skill level uh, or even just desire uh, or whatever, mm -hmm. would become unnecessary. Right. Exactly. Uh, uh, that it's yeah, uh, and I think it's not about the willow stick. No. It's about the brain and the well, heart. And if if I go that. into a home and I'm looking for a noxious zone, for instance, underground water. And I'm walking along and I say, please show me the edge of underground water. And it will turn one way or the other. Now, that's a very visual thing that the homeowner can see that there is a difference. And I'll get to the other side and it will turn back and go straight. Okay. Now, I can do some clearing and then walk through the same area and the rod will just stay straight. It's a very visual thing for someone else right. to look at. Um, my husband uses these all the time in, in doing water because he will walk along and say, please cross when I get to the edge of the water. Okay. And they will go like that. Okay. Please show me a no and the rods will go apart. So it's just a way of amplifying, and also for other people, it helps to see right. what's going on. And, and that's what I'm getting with your visit today, that you're saying these things for the benefit of our radio program. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Saying them out loud, because it, it almost appears as if you're speaking to the devices, and I right. know that's not it. It's just kind of what's in the head, right. and then kind of yes. extending that out and helping to kind of steer mm -hmm. uh, that. I keep trying to pinpoint science, skill, emotion, faith, and it occurs to me that there's a little bit of all of it in there. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's just kind of you your do. being. You do. You have to suspend technical uh, yeah. skepticism a little bit in order to make this work. But if the first couple of times you get something and you get a positive response and you go check it, then you've got it. Right. I would check to see if the power to our garage door had been turned off. I would stand in the kitchen and I would douse. Is the power to our garage door um, off or on? I would say off. Uh -huh. And then I could go and check and see if indeed Ed, my husband had turned it off. So that was a very <laughs> visual, right. easy, quick way for me to verify what I was dowsing. And that was one of the ways I used to train myself. I can douse if food in the refrigerator in a closed container has positive life force. And then I can douse, and yes, it does, and I can open it up. And, or if I douse, no, it doesn't, I open it up and it's obviously spoiled. Uh -huh. That's a real evaluation or a confirmation of what my dowsing skill did. <laughs> so that's how I trained myself. Okay, so to from finding water to bad baloney, Exactly. In, <laughs> in between. between. We can do it. Exactly. All right, Carolyn, it's interesting. When we come back, we do need to take another break. We'll talk about some of the things. You gave me a list of some of the topics that I think will be discussed at the mm -hmm. conference. Yes. Uh, we'll share those with our, our listeners and our viewers. Uh, it's countywide. Carolyn Stillman is here. The American Society of Dowsers will be back right after this.
Now, some action from the courts. Billie Jean King renewing her rivalry with arthritis. First set, furious volley. And right to the net for a winner. Beautiful forehand there. Arthritis, stunned. And here, match point. Billie Jean with the ace, taking it in straight sets. Afterwards, a jubilant Billie Jean King. Tennis is a weapon for me with arthritis. There's nothing like it for me to hit a ball, run to the ball, any time, any court. I'm ready. Let's go. What's your weapon against arthritis? Find out at fightarthritispain.org. Packers. Viking. Packers. Viking. Packers. Viking. Red state. Blue state. Vegan. Carnivore. We come from different places. Uptown. Downtown. Optimus. Center. We come to different conclusions. Half empty. Half full. But when we live united, we create real, lasting change in the building blocks of life. The education, income, and health of our communities, <laughs> our families, united. even the person next to us. Live united. Real change won't happen without you. So give, advocate, volunteer. Live united. Sign up at liveunited.org. moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Hi, I'm Captain Larry Dawson with the Cottonwood Fire Department here to talk to you about cooking safety in your home. The number one cause of house fires today is lack of safety in the kitchen. Always set a timer while you're cooking. If a fire starts in your oven, close the door and turn the oven off. When kids are present while cooking, always use the back burners and keep handles turned in and out of reach of children. Never leave an open flame unattended and always have a working fire extinguisher nearby. Welcome back to the program. It is countywide. Our guest today, Carolyn Stillman. You've been a gem. This has been a, an absolute riot. I just, I, I, it's fun when we can step outside. Kind of what we do, we talk with you know community leaders and, mm -hmm. and things like that, and that's important. And we love it. But every now and again, we find a guest that has something new to say, uh, and certainly you've done that today. Again, it's this weekend uh, at Little America in Flagstaff. ArizonaDowsers.com is the website for information about that. And if I'm listening right now to the radio and I want to find out more, this would be a good weekend to do it. Exactly. Okay. And we have a basic dowsing school on Friday from 9 to 4. Uh, we'll teach you how to use um, one of all, or all of these four instruments. It just gives you the basic things. Even if you don't know how to douse, the rest of the conference is really fun. It can really expand your horizons. And we do three days of conference lectures. I have 40 speakers coming. So we have a myriad of subjects. There's a lot of things happening. Right. Some of the things um, that'll be at the conference, you gave me a list here, business and health. Some of the things that we've chatted about today, personal relationships, we can certainly see that. Um, healing the planet, uh, preparing for 2012 and beyond. You told me that there was a fellow you know who, who studies our, this art. Our keynote speaker, Stephen Harefield, okay. is a very good person at predicting things. He predicted the earthquake in Washington, D.C. about three months ahead of time. Okay. And he is looking ahead toward 2012. You worried about 2012, the changes that are happening. Um, he will help and help us understand what to do and what not to do. Okay. And just move ahead. All right. Excellent. Again, I, I really appreciate it. We, I didn't even, I, I knew nothing about this uh, until we, we got the little note, and uh, we're glad that you came in and shared uh, your knowledge and interest uh, with us today, Carolyn. Carolyn Stillman, again, conference director this weekend. It's the Southwest uh, Dowsing Conference at Little America in Flagstaff, uh, 7th through the 12th. ArizonaDowsers.com is the website. You can find more information. Thank you much. Have fun this well, weekend. Thank you. I we enjoyed you it. Thanks Great. much. It's countywide. We'll see you next time. has been countywide a special presentation of Yavapai Broadcasting News. Listen in each Tuesday and Thursday as we tackle the hot topics and talk to the decision makers across Yavapai County. That's countywide with Brad Miller and Paul David each Tuesday and Thursday on this Yavapai Broadcasting Station.